here is the demo of the complete system so if we have person have account person can be able to log in successfully so now we have to create an account so we'll just click on sign up we can make use of this sign up page to create an account so for example here we want to use let's say this name then we are going to create we are going to create email so we have something like this let's say we do this then we'll put add sign then we'll just leave it the way it is then we'll now put all this a rampant password so now we'll click on register so you can see here we have to put a valid email so to put a valid email let's use something like this gmail.com so simino at gmail.com so if i click on register you can see the system will detect and tell us that the password field does not match so the password field must match so if i put something like one two three four five then one two three four five i'll click on register you can see it says that the password field must be at least eight characters all right so this is a very good validation so now the password we use one two three four five six seven eight nine and here also one two three four five six seven eight nine so after we do this then we will now register yes so we have successfully registered so now next thing to do is we are going to log in so now we are going to log in so let us assume we want to use a rampant email that we don't have in our account so the moment you just put this you click on login so the login page also have it is on validation you can see these credentials do not match so now let uh, we, let us use our email which is simino at gmail.com then the password we use one two three four five six seven eight nine so click on login to log in yes so you can see we are able to log in this is the name all right so now we can click on this we click on profile so this will take us to where we can be able to update our profile so we can click on this to select an image that we can want to use so i will select something like this and click on ok so now this is the name here we have the phone number we can use anything as phone number you click on save so the moment you click on save now we can see our name our picture is displaying and here also the user picture is displaying so that is it so after we do this next we can now go to apply for loan so here we can be able to apply for loan then we also have admin section so this admin section is different from this so this is admin section all right so this admin session here when we click on all users you can see we can see we can be able to see users this is the admin user this is the regular user then this is the user that just log in now right so with this you can be able to change the user to admin you can also be able to change the user to user for example the way it is if i want to change this user to admin i'll just click on this like this you can see it's loading it shows congrat user role updated successfully so to confirm that you can just click on view details you can see this user is admin from here admin can also change the status back to either active or not active all right so let's go back to the users all users so now let's change this user back to user you can see user role is changed and here is also changed this is very cool then after that you can be able to delete user when we click on delete like this you can see we have a sweet alert so it will tell us whether we want to confirm when we say cancel it is not going to be deleted if we click on delete then we click on yes delete so you can see this user has been deleted and it is showing us this very beautiful toast all right so that is it so now let's go back to the user channel a uh, user section so user can be able to apply for loan so this is the form so let us here we are expecting to add an amount so when we put something like 1000 or 100000 this is 100000 then the bank that the user is using we put something like express bank that's the name of the bank express bank 
then we have the account number so the account number we can put one two three four five six seven eight nine ten zero now we select the type of the bank the loan so this is a this type of the loan is dynamic from the admin the admin can be able to add loan for example here when we come to the admin section here you can see manage loan type or oh, click on view loan types these are all the loan types so if admin want you can add another loan type we can say car loan type so click on submit admin add automatically you can see loan type registered and the car loan type is added here so if user come to his own channel here when we refresh this page you click on this you can see the new loan type is there all right so that is very cool here user can just add the amount we have something like hundred thousand then here we have the bank we can use any bank american american express then here we can put the account number 987 just any rampant number we can select the the loan type we can say car loan type then the installment that is how many times the user want to be paying we can put something like five times the moment we put installment five times you can see it will automatically add 10 percent interest in the loan then it will now calculate the installment amount which is which is this total amount with the loan divided by five all right so this is the total amount with the interest then divide by five installment which will give you the installment amount all right so on doing this the moment user click on submit to submit this loan application you can see loan applied successfully so now from the admin section admin can be able to view and know the type of the loan that comes in so we we'll click on view here you can see we have loan application loan types then we also have view loan applications so the moment i will click on this you can see the loan application that was recently submitted which is not approved so only the loan that is not approved that admin can be able to see i'll click on view you can see the loan here uh, this is the person that applied for the loan then this is the details of the loan the person uh, the admin can click on this to change the status of the loan you can see loan updated successfully and the loan is approved then transfer is going to be made so here you can view loan you can see admin can be able to see this so all the uh, have this have many other pictures below this then apart from this i did not show you when you come as the user as the normal user or you want to log in let's assume i click on this we click on here we click on log out all right you can click on password when you click on password you can see user can be able to change password for example when i type wrong password here i type something different this sub validation you can see password in is incorrect and password field confirmation don't know much so this is very cool so now let us assume I click on this to log out. So when I click on log out to go, I forget password. The moment I click on forget password, this is going to take us to forget password field. So here, let us assume the name of our, our email is the email we are using is we can call it uh, the name of the email, a registered email. We have Samino at gmail dot com. So I click on send reset all right so the moment you send reset we already say i show you how you learn how to add up smtp and set it for set it up inside your program all right so the moment you can see we have email your password so the password is emailed into so this this project have so many pictures inside so because of the time i cannot be able to explain everything so when you when you purchase this course you are going to learn a lot and you are free to ask as many questions as possible all right so see you in the inside the course here i will show you the pages and components that we are going to use in this project that is uh, i have zipped it already so this is going to be attached to this video all you just need to do is you just right click on it and you now extract it 
all right so when it finish extracting so any function or any component that you need is there already assigned inside so all right so this is it the moment you extract it this is the page here here we have all the content all right so this is it so you, all these components they are there in use so make sure you you extract it and after that you follow it one after the other if you have any question any problem try to ask throughout the course see you deeply in the course in this lecture we are going to learn how you install Laravel together with Tailwind CSS so you just go to your Google search of Tailwind CSS alright so when you search of Tailwind CSS this is it here so what you need to do is you have to click on this framework guide As you click on framework guide now we are going to work with laravel so we click on laravel so as it is open we have two tabs this is using bit using laravel mix so we are going to use the default one which is using bit so before we do this we are going to make sure that we are inside our local host folder so it depends on what local host you are using in this project we are going to use zamp so i'm going to open zamp you can also download zamp so i'm going to open zamp let me make sure you download the latest version you start it like this for you to download zamp it's just very easy you can just go to your browser type zamp download then search up zamp download you can see download zamp you just click on download it will take you to zamp when it take you to zamp the website from there you can see many versions that you can download so you download the latest version if possible this latest version depend on your bit so you just download this when you download it you install it that is the local host so now let's get back all right so as you open you open your explorer then you go to c drive you can see zam folder open the zam folder inside the zam folder you open hc docs and from there we are now going to open command from from this folder so you just click type cmd then you hit enter so when you do this you can see now you are in hc docs so make sure this is open properly after this you now go back to your browser so we are going to use composer to create this project this is composer so if you don't have composer installed on your system this is how you install it so let me copy this composer like this we we'll just come to this place you we'll say download composer so hit enter this will take you to this first item which is get composer so you click on it this is the composer download page you can copy this and paste it in the directory of your project and hit enter that is you copy it like this then you now paste it here i already have composer so i don't need to do that or you can click on download and run you just click on this composer setup here it will start downloading for you so you now install it after it downloaded these are the processes to install composer all right so make sure you do that otherwise your project creation will not be successful all right so now after you do this 
you now come click on uh, copy this command composer create project Laravel then the name of your project so you remember we often this htdocs in our directory so you now paste it so this will create Laravel project a brand new Laravel project so let's remove this default name we we'll call it loan let's say we we'll call this loan all right so this is the name of our project all right so after you do this then you now hit on enter before you do that make sure you are connected to internet because it's going to generate a lot of files in your system so you hit enter so this is going to download all the necessary files needed and set up your Laravel project for you so this is sometimes takes time depend on your internet connection if you have strong internet connection this is not supposed to take long period of time so let's be patient and watch the progress until when it is done therefore we will make sure that we don't have any problem it is installing all the packages needed for the start of so let's wait for it all right so now it has finished installing all the necessary things needed all right so let's go back to the website so here you can see cd my project so now we need to change directory so cd the name of our project is loan and hit enter now we are in a loan folder so after we do that we we'll now go and install Tailwind CSS with use of NPM. NPM stands for Node Package Manager. So that means if you don't have Node.js installed on your computer, you need to install it. So for you to install it, you just go to Node website. Node.js website. Just type Node.js. This first option, you click on it. So this is the latest version of Node.js as at this time. Maybe when you are opening this at your at that time that you are opening it, it may be different from this version. So make sure you install the latest version. Currently, we are going to use this version. All right. So make sure you install it. All right. So I'll copy this command. Right click copy. I'll come back we'll now click on this so we are now pasting it inside next we just hit enter this is going to install npm inside this project for us so it is generating all the necessary files from internet so make sure you have internet connection Alright, so now we have installed npm inside this project. So what we need to do next is we'll go back there. You can see npx tailwind CSS initialize that is in it. So right click copy it. Then after you run it, it is going to generate it to this, these two files tailwind.compig and post.compig. Alright for css.config so we we'll just copy this particular command right click copy then you come back and also add it up here then hit enter so 
So it have created, you can see created Tailwind CSS config file and also post CSS config file. All right. So the text editor we are going to use in this project is Visual Studio code that is BS code. So if you don't have it, you just type BS code download. Just search for this. All right, so it will open this for you. Just click on the first item. So you can see Visual Studio Code website. So depend on your window, you can just follow the instruction. If you are using Windows, it depends on your operating system. If you are using Windows, so you can just download, just click and download. This is going to set up the, so this is going to give you the setup. Then you now install it in your computer. All right, so now as we do this, to open our website, our project in BS code, that will be just studio code. What we need to do is we can just type code dot. When you type this, you hit enter. This is going to open this project in BS code. Yes. So our project is open in BS code. All right, so you can see all our project folders. You can see it, right? So you can see it generated this file for us. That is Tailwind CSS. It also generated this for CSS config for us. All right. So what we are going to do now is we are going to do the remaining work. So we we'll come back to the Tailwind CSS website. We are going to add this inside the Tailwind config file. So right click, copy this code. Go back to your BS code. This is the Tailwind config file. Here is it here. So what we need to do is this content we will now remove it, then uh, paste the code we copied. The same things we just added. Uh, the project is going to work with resources than any file that is of blade file so laravel have a depend complete uh, templating file which is blade and it is also going to work with js it is also going to work with view file all right that's Vue.js. so when we do this you click on control plus s to save it so when you save your project is saved completely now all right so after this we'll go back to Tailwind css uh, you come to we are going to add the Tailwind directive to our CSS. So all we need to do is we we'll copy this or we we'll copy this code. We we'll go to our development environment. You navigate to resources. This is where all your files are going to be. So we'll go to CSS, then app.css the CSS is currently empty so we are going to paste the code that we copied this particular code here all right so let's press ctrl plus s so as we do this we are now good to go with Tailwind CSS so we don't need to run uh, npm run now we don't need to do anything because we are going to install authentication package in our project all right so this is how we can install tailwind css together with laravel in the next lecture we are going to install the authentication so see you in the next lecture do not forget to write reviews good reviews to support this whole lecture thank you see you in the next lecture In this lecture, we are going to run the project for the first time to see how it looks like. So for we to run the project, we have to go to the command prompt. We have to make sure that we are inside the project folder. That is this. So we'll type php artisan serve. So we hit enter. Make sure your ZAMP 
is on as usual. All right, so it will give us this address. So we'll copy this address. You go to your browser. You will now use the address. This is it here. So you now hit enter. So now our project is created successfully. You can see the version of the Laravel, which is 10.18.0. The version of the PHP 8.21.2. Alright. So this is how we run it. So next we are now going to see how we can install the authentication package. We are going to use Laravel Breathe. See you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to add authentication into our project so for you to add it let's open laravel documentation website so you just go to your browser type laravel hit enter so the first item which is laravel.com click on it to open it click on this search search laravel breathe This first option, Laravel Breathe Starter Kit. Click on it. You will scroll down. We have to install this with use of Composer. So you click on this to copy it. Or you highlight everything. Right click, copy. You will go back to your command prompt. You can see currently our project is running so we have to open another command from from the project directory so you go back to the project directory which is in C you go to ZAMP you go to htdocs the name of our project is loan this is it here so you click inside type CMD hit enter this is going to open directory from this project folder so now paste this command composer require laravel breeze make sure you are connected to internet before doing this so hit on enter this is going to download all the breeds packages alright so now bridge package is installed in our project so now we have to confirm something let's go back to our browser this is how our project looks so let me refresh this project so as we refresh it now what we need to do next is you can see we do not see any changes in the project so let's go back to the installation guidelines this package you can see php at some bridge install so let's copy this line you come back to this then you paste it this is going to install the bridge inside the project after downloading it so let's hit on enter so it is asking which bridge stack will you like to install so select the first item which is blade all right so just hit enter you can see if you hit enter it will say arrow value is invalid so you need to specify that it is blade all right so let's type blade 
enter you can see will you like dark mode support just say no then will you like testing framework do you prefer which do, do you prefer so you can just hit enter so this is now installing the package which is breeze so let's give it little period of time it will be done very soon if it opens something like this for you just click on keep run so now breeze is installed in the project all right so when you go back to the installation guidelines we are not going to migrate yet when you come back to the page you refresh it you can see we have login and register page created for us if you click on login you can see this is going to open the login page when you click on register it is also going to open the register page but for currently we cannot be able to register we cannot also be able to log in so for you to do that we need to create database for our project and configure it so to create the database let's go to localhost slash php my admin you hit on enter so as we are using zamp so we are going to use php my admin to create the database so here we have all the list of the database so you click on new the name of the database we can give it loan then you click on create so now we created a database called loan so let's copy this database name and configure it in our project so you come back to this for you to configure it you can see environment dot emv file so you click on it you now come to database here you can see the default name of the database is Laravel so just remove the Laravel and add the name of your database which is loan if you are using different username in your username for uh, server in your local host you can use it here if you have password you can add it but default when you install zamp you don't need to change anything so you just have loan that is all make sure you save this file so you go to file then you click on save you have saved this file you can close it now all right so as we do this next thing to do is we are now going to migrate so what we have to do is let's go back to the directory you can click on npm install for the breeze to work perfectly so click on it you just copy this npm install come back to this particular place paste it all right this is installed then after this you can also come back again you can click on npm run dev you paste it also so the last thing for you to do is we have php artisan migrate all right so you just click on this but before you migrate it we have to do some little changes when we talk about migrate that means as we create the database which is the loan database we have a migration folder a migration file inside the database so this is database folder we have migration you can see we have this user all right so this user we have to change some fields 
for we to migrate it into our database all right so for you to change the fields these are the steps that we are going to take so we are going to add some fields so i'll just copy this we are going to use images so add image here We are also going to use phone number. So all these fields we are going to add no level. So no level means even if there is no content in it, it won't give us problem. Here also, we are going to add no label. Then we are going to add two more fields. We'll add them, let's say, at this place. So this is going to be for role and status. So we are going to have admin we are also going to have user so these are the two roles that we are going to deal with so admin then we have user so the default is going to be user so we type default like this we will now indicate which is going to be the use uh, the default use uh, registered members which is going to be user now put semicolon make sure you end everything with semicolon so this is for the role we we'll copy this and paste it below so this is going to be for status so the status of this user we have two options active and inactive so the default is going to be active the default we can use inactive that means admin need to activate person before person can be able to carry out some operations so we use inactive as the default all right so this is cool we are done with the setup of the migrations table so we are now good to migrate our database our database information so we'll come back to this copy then open commands from this is already running so you can go back to your directory open another cmd then paste this php at some migrate all right i repeat again make sure that in your emb file you set up your database which is the name of your database here we created it as loan all right we created it as loan this is it here so let's now activate this which is php artisan migrate hit enter so now it have migrated the tables for us all right all the migrations table are done so now let's come back to this database refresh the php my admin you can see inside this loan database we have tables the users table that we just change the migrations detail this is how it looks like you can see we have name image phone number email 
and other things role and status that we just added all right so now we are good to go all right so in the next lecture we are going to seed some data into the table therefore we can be using the data in our next lectures we can use the data for login and register as well all right so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to learn how we can seed data into the database what we mean by seeding data into the database is you add some default data into your database without the use of form all right so for example when we come to php my admin you click on browse you can see our user data is our user table is empty there is no any record into it so we are going to use cedar to seed data into this table so let's begin so for we to do this we first of all need to open our command prompt so command prompt is open from this you have to make sure you are inside your project directory so i'm going to use php artisan to generate the cedar class all right so we type it like this So, users table cedar. This is going to be the cedar name. Then this is the command php artisan make cedar. All right. So before you hit enter, go to your project folder. Here, this is where the cedar is going to be created inside the database directory. You can see we have cedars. Here we have only one cedar, which is the default database cedar. You understand so this is where our cedar class is going to be created so let's go to the project again let's go to the command prompt then we hit enter after typing this command we tap created cedar class you can see database cedars users table cedar created successfully so when we come back to our project here you can see we have database cedars we have the users table cedar when we click on it this is what we have all right so this is how you can create the cedar class in your project next we are going to do so many things so first of all we have to include our users model users model which is the one that we use to navigate to communicate with our database from our project so to see the model you have to come to our folder we have models you click on it this is users model so we have to call it inside our cedar class so you just click on this you just type this All right, so we are done with this next we are going to add all the content of what we want to seed all right so let's start with a comment so for you to comment you just do this so we are going to seed admin user So we have to call this user so now this user model we say create that means it's going to create a record for us inside our user table all right so we are going to add the default records so we we'll start with name
we'll add username let's check our table we we'll make sure that we have username so we don't have username so we have to continue with the remaining fields all right so let me do this therefore we can see all the fields we have name we have added it there Alright, so now we are going to set this data for the name, admin user, email, admin at example.com, role, admin, status, active, password. It is going to hash and hash this uh, text, which is password. So this is it. Next, we can do the same things for the user. Alright, so let me just copy this. So this is going to be for a regular user. This is a comment. All right. So we we'll change this to regular user. The role will also change it to user. Instead of admin, it's going to be active. It's also going to be password. This is the first word here. All right. So when we see this, we are going to get those data in our table. All right. So after we make sure that this is added successfully, we don't have any problem. What we need to do, we have to click on save to save this. All right. So when we save it, Make sure you save this. After you save it, we will now go back to your CMD. So we will now run a command to send that record into our database. So for it, this is the command. Alright, so this is the command php artisan db seed. Then we indicate the class and it's equals to users table cedar, which is this users table cedar. Alright, so now let's hit on enter. Alright, so you can see um, we have little thing that we need to adjust. It is saying telling us whenever you come across this error, it says database cedar hash not found. Alright. So you have to include the hash that you used in your project. All right. So let's include the hash we used in the project. Instead of using hash, we can use another inbuilt Laravel function, which is bcrypt. You type it like this. Bcrypt. All right. So this is going to encrypt this password text. So just copy this. 
and also use it at this all right so make sure you click on save to save your project after you save it let's go Oxco and give it a try again so you use this command php artisan db seed class users table hit enter very nice it says seeding database all right then it's um run everything so let's go back to our database and check it out all right so we'll come back to our database here in the database you click on browse yes you can see the two records are there name we have admin user regular this is email role admin then this role is user then the status is all active then these are the encrypted passwords where we use that we use bcrypt to encrypt them all right so this is very cool all right so now let's give it a try i'll copy this email let's go to our project you refresh the project go to login so use that email then in our sida if you can remember we use password as our password for the admin we also use it as the password for the user so we use this then hit login yes you can see we are logging successful when i click on log out i'll use the user account i'll click on login again it then the first word we put first word then we we'll now log in you can see regular user this is cool so here we come to the end of this lecture see you in the next lecture in this lecture we want to forplate this loan type with the data that we have in the loan type table all right so that is what we want to do so for we to do that all we just need to do is first of all we have to we have to create relationship between the two table all right so to create a relationship between the two table we have to go to the model all right so let's go to the model so here we have let's close this also you don't need this also learn application controller let's close this so first now let's go to the model so model is inside of models so open loan application model so inside this we will create the first relationship so here we are going to create a function we'll call it public function we can call it loan type all right so now open curly brace and close it under this so we'll now say return this belongs to then this we are now going to call the other that is the loan type this particular loan type model so loan types then class all right so we are done with this first part we save it then we open the loan type also so inside the loan type we are also going to create the relationship so here it is also going to be public function we'll call it loan application loan applications like this all right so we we'll now say return this you can say has many so here we are going to call the loan application model 
so we are also going to utilize the class in it all right and we'll put semicolon at the end so now we are done with this also so next we have to go to the controller so the loan controller http controllers then we have backend we have admin then loan controller so inside this loan controller you can see this is the this is the function that used to display this view all right so we have to attach some things into it so before we attach things let's now call the model that is the loan type model also so i'll just copy this i'll paste this and here is going to be loan types like this all right so after the loan types here we are now going to create a variable we'll call it loan types is equals to loan type that is this this model like this then we will now say all all right then we now put semicolon at the end so this is cool so now the last part is we have to go to the view that is this particular view this whole form view so we have to go to the form view so to do that let's minimize all this we go to resources we have views then we have users then we have loan application we we'll double click on this to open this so this is it here so here we have to remove these three we'll change this to select loan type so we'll do something like this select loan type like this and here we'll remove the value from personal we'll say selected this is the selected item so after we do this next we have to create for each so we'll say for each so for each we we'll create a variable a variable which you get from the controller this is it loan type so let's just copy this compact but we have to compact it here we already know that so we'll say comma comma then we now type compact all right then we we'll paste it inside here so now we'll come back to this place we we'll now add it off like this then as we can create another variable loan type we can say as lt all right so inside this for each we are now going to add the option all right so the option the first value is going to be this lt dot id that is id we are going to use the id first so lt like this then we have id all right so after we do this inside this other one we can just copy this exactly the way it is so we'll now paste it at this place all right so next thing to do is we'll now say name all right so press ctrl plus s to save this so that is all we have to do so now let's go there and refresh this yes as we refresh it here it remains select loan type when we click on the drop down you can see we have all these four loan types from our database that is from this database here all right so here we have come to the end of this lecture we'll meet in the next lecture do not forget to drop review for this lecture in this lecture we are going to change the default page of this application to login page for example now as we load the page with this address it is showing us this welcome page we are going to change it to this login page all right so for we to do this let's go to the code this is our folder this is the view that is this particular view that always used to load this first view is here we click on resources views welcome so this welcome is the page that displays this content on the browser so we want change it to views auth login page so we are going to change it to this login page so for we to do that all we have to do is 
we have to go to the route so we'll go to route folder then wave.php so in this you can see this welcome page that is this particular page here this particular page we are going to replace it with this so this page which is login.blade is inside out folder so we we'll just do this we we'll come to this place we will remove this welcome then we will now add out that is the name of the folder that is this particular folder here then we will now put dot login all right so when we do this we have now changed the default page so click on save that is control s to save it so this is how we can do it when we come back now to the page when we refresh this you can see our default page is now login so this login is the login form that user can use to log into his dashboard admin can also use it to log into his dashboard all right so this is all in the next lecture we are going to customize this login page see you in the next lecture so in this video we are going to customize our login form that is this particular login page all right so for we to do that i have attached two files into this video all right into this lecture so the files are we have login.html then tailwind.css that is tailwindmin.css i have to attach it you can just download it below this lecture all right so how do we use it what we have to do now is this file i'll just right click on it i'll open it with my editor since i'm using bs code i'll open it in restricted mode all right so the way it is now uh, i don't need this i'll just delete this so i will now control it to copy everything from this next i'll go to the login that is this particular login on the page so i will now go to resources views out this login which is generated by uh, by breed authentication package so i will click on login like this so i will now come to the end of this this is our default code so we are now going to paste everything here all right so the first custom customization is we have to copy this whole thing that is the form this is form post route login that is the route of this form when it is clicked all right so we'll just copy everything from here we'll now come to the form here which is empty i'll just paste it all right so we are done with this part next part is we have to just come to this place you can see name email right so we we'll now copy we are just going to add two uh, three more things name then we are also going to add the value all right so i'll copy this name first so in the email here you can see we have email id then give space we we'll now put name after this we we'll add value so this value what we have to do is you can see here this is how the value is for the email this is the value here so copy this only this all right like this because the way we use it in our normal html is different from the blade file so we have to know how to use that so for the value what we have to do is we just need to use this then we now paste this all email that's the value so next we are now going to use we are going to add placeholder the placeholder we'll call it email so this is for the email we are done with the email so for the first word all we just need to do is also sentence we we'll just come to the id after id we we'll just put name name is this course is going to be password then after the name 
we'll also add placeholder. So the placeholder will also put password. All right. So that is this. Then uh, after this, we have forget password. So this forget password, we are going to add a route to the forget password. So we we'll just put this. Anytime you want to add a route, you just put route like this. Open round bracket, close the round bracket. Inside the round bracket, we'll put password. Password dot request. That is the name of the route. All right. So this route handle the forget password. All right. We are going to test it out later on. Okay. So that's it. Then after this, you can see the item here which says don't have account. That means if you don't have account, so we we'll have to also add a route that will take somebody to register page. So we have the double. Uh, Call it brace. Then we'll now add the route. The route is register. So that is all on this. Okay. So now we are free to remove this particular one. This particular one that is the debilet uh, syntax. We have to remove them all. So we just come to this place. Remove everything from there. Control plus S to save this. So to save it, what we have to do is after I click on control plus s we save this file so we can go back to the page refresh it you can see uh, since we are working with bit we already have the output so next thing is to add this file we have to add this file which is telling uh, mean the css that's what we are going to add so for we to add it I'll copy this file like this when I copy it I'll go into the project file this project file now um, that is we have a public folder inside this public folder we are going to create a folder we we'll call this folder as backend all right so inside the backend we'll create another folder we'll call it css all right so this is going to contain this so this css for we to add something into it we we'll just right click on it you click on reveal in file explorer that means you are going into the page you can see hdocs loan public backend css so we are going to paste this file i we'll have to copy this file from here so we'll now come and paste it at this place so now this file is added so we have to load it on this page for our page to be beautiful so what we have to do is come back here be before the title we'll add a link the href so we'll now put double double breast like this then we'll now say asset when we say asset we are referring to this public folder all right so now we'll open a round bracket and close it so we'll put this all right so when we put this next thing to do is we are going to specify the folder the folder is backend all right so backend then slash css slash tailwind the name of the file tailwind dot main dot css all right so after doing this Make sure we click on save to save this. So we we'll now go back to the login page. You can see, yes, we have our login page. We have forget password link. We have login. We have this uh, sign up. All right. So let's try to log in now and see if everything went well. So our admin login details are admin. at example.com then the first word we put first word all right then we'll click on login so it is loading yes we are done this successfully all right we can also 
test with use of user so at in user is user at example.com then the password is password now we'll click on login also yes now we can see we have all arrived successfully all right so log out as well so now next thing to do is we have to check this forget password when we click on it it took us to default forget password page likewise when we click on sign off it will also take us to default sign off page all right so now we follow them accordingly all right so this is done successfully in the next video we will now customize the forget password page all right so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to add more information more pictures to this login form so now imagine if you try to log in for example we know that when we use this detail that is admin at example.com then we also use password that is our real password now we'll click on login so definitely we are going to log in successfully all right so in a situation where when we try to use wrong password for example i'll put something like aa at gmail dot com then we put the password just anything that comes to our mind when we click on login so you can see it is not login because the details are incorrect right but we need to as well show some information therefore the user will know that he have made mistake all right so let's begin with that so for we to do that we have to go to the login page this is the login page all right so inside the login page since we are using tailwind css all right so what we have to do is let's come under this form that is under the csrf token here so we are using tailwind css we are going to design a simple information component all right that can only be displayed if there is an error so we'll start with the if so here we have if then we have end if so inside the if we are now going to specify the conditions so we have this laravel error So say if errors So now this details here tell us that if errors have email that means we have error in the email that we are submitting and also or we have error in the first word that is in the first word we are submitting so the next code is going to be executed so now we are going to add a div for that So inside this div, we are going to add some Tailwind CSS class.
all right so now we have add the alert div all right so next we are going to add the items so we are going to use ul for that so now these items are going to be two there may be one for email then the other one for password so we we'll do it like this so now if it is for the email that means if the error is from the email so this is where we are going to display the error Alright, so if the error is from the email, so email error is going to be displayed. Else, if it is for the password, so also do another if statement at the bottom. Alright, so if it is the password, we just change this to password. Then we are going to display the password. We are going to display the error all right so now let's check this out and see how it looks like currently when we go back to the page we make sure we save the changes we have made so when we go back to the page click on refresh to refresh it we cannot be able to see anything yet all right because we said if there is the error so now let's try it out we are going to use wrong email so i can put asdf at let's say yahoo.com and the first word i can put something like qq just anything that comes to our mind so i'll click on login so you can see these credentials do not match our record all right so now this is how we can be able to show error all right let's assume we use the correct email admin at example dot com so now put the password to our original password which is password we click on login yes we can we are able to log in so this is how we can be able to show error in our page all right see you in the next lecture please do not forget to write a review therefore it will help us and make our lectures more useful to all the other students. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to work with forget password. So when we click on forget password, this page is going to display for us. That is the forget password where user will add his email, then we'll get the password reset link into his email. So this is a default page generated for us by Breeze authentication package that we installed earlier. So now we are going to customize this page. Therefore, we will change the design and add so many things to it. So to do that, there is a file that we are going to work with. This file, it is just a design forget password page that we are going to use to customize this particular one. Alright, so let me preview it for you. Therefore, you can see how it looks like. So the way it is now, I'll just open it in a browser. Alright, so you can see it here. It is not displaying anything for us because we have to add the Tailwind CSS link uh, the CSS link to it. All right. So to do that, all we have to do now is let's go to the code section. This is the code. So what we have to do is we need to copy everything from this. I'm going to put a link, a download link of this file under this particular lecture. All right. So when you open it, 
I already copied everything. I will copy it. Then we will go into our project. We have to go through this resources folder, views, auth. Then we have forget password. So this is the default forget password page. So I'm going to paste the copy it. I'm going to paste the copy it. All right. So now let me remove everything from this. I will remove this particular link that is the CSS link. When I remove it, uh, next thing to do is we are going to replace it later on. All right. So for now, let's deal with the form. So as usual, we have our form here with method of post. Then action it says password email, right? Then we we'll see SRF token. So let me copy this. When I copy this, I'll now come to the form here. I will remove this and replace this particular one. Alright. So after doing this, the next thing to do is we will now come to the input. We have the email input. You can see we have ID. Then we have type, then we have name. So name and value. All right. So we have done this earlier. So let me copy the name later on. I will put the email as well. All right. So now this is our email here. We just click the input. We we'll now add this particular one. Next, we are going to add value. So the value is going to be as we did on the other. Um, page which is our login page so we'll put old and open round bracket close and we'll now add email all right so that is all now next if we like we can add placeholder so the placeholder is also going to be email so i think that is all on this but here we have a link that is back to login so let's assume we want to set back to login so we we'll now add a URL that is our login page URL. So we we'll do this. We we'll now put URL offer round bracket close. Then we we'll now add this slash. So we'll add this slash. So we are now referring to our index page. That is this first page. When we remove this, forget password. This is now our main page. That is the post page. So. The URL the moment we add slash so we are referring to the to that home URL all right so that's all on this so what we have to do next is I'm going to remove everything from this that is our blades the default blade syntax is going to be removed so we have only the new one so I'll put on save that is to save this next we'll go back refresh this page so click on forget password yeah so now everything is there the only thing is that we're supposed to link our tailwind css so i'll show you the other time when you come to tailwind css let's open a tailwind css all right you have to make sure you are connected to internet because we want to open the tailwind css website all right so I want to show you another trick to easily include Tailwind syntax into your project. So as we did earlier, you can just come down here. You can see this bit resource CSS app. All right. So you just copy this particular item. So when you copy it, we'll now come back to the page here. So we'll make sure we include it at this place paste it here then we'll click on save to save the file all right so you remember we changed this inside resource css app.css this particular item here all right so now what we have to do next is we'll go back to there after adding it we'll click try to refresh our page so you can see now our tailwind css is added all right so now we have this link which is back to login the moment we click on it it 
to take us back to our main page that is the login which is the url of it is slash so that is what we just use here to so use slash as the url url slash so it is now taking us to there directly had it been we use something like uh url slash then we'll put something like register so when i save this if go back to the refresh it when i go to forget password when i click come back to login you can see instead of it to take me back it is taking me to slash register so that is how it works so let let us immediately change it back to the home page that is our login page all right so this is how we can customize the reset password page all right that is our forget password page so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to set up forget password all right after we have customized it to this look so for we to do that first of all we need a situation where when we add our email for example the email we are using for user so user at example.com so if we set if you send this it should take us to it will it will take us to our email where we are going to get a verification link therefore when we click on the link then we can reset the password all right so that's what we are going to do now so first of all we need to set up an smtp server for that so we are going to use a sample just a simple one so for you to set it up we are going to use um there is a mail trap so this mail trap we click on enter this is going to you can see this um, mail trap so you just click on it when you click on it you can sign off into it so to sign up is just very easy so let's just click on sign off so i'm going to use google account you can also sign up with your email all right so I'm click on sign up with email add your email account so then you add your password also repeat the password then you click on sign off so they have sent a confirmation link all right so let me check my email to see the confirmation link all right so the confirmation link will soon appear so let us wait for it so the moment it appears all you just need to do is to just go to your email open it then click on the confirmation link all right so in the inbox the email is not there so let me check this spam folder so I'll click on spam folder yes we can be able to see it in this spam folder so just click on spam you can see it so i just click on confirm my account so this is now going to confirm my account so after confirmation i just need to log in to my account all right so this is just a very easy step all right all right so you just click on this to close so email testing so you just click on start testing so here you can see integration smtp setting that is the integration so you click on the drop down here you choose the framework you are using we are using php and laravel all right so you can see laravel 9 plus so you just click on this because we are using laravel 10 so this we are now going to copy everything you just highlight everything right click and copy it all right so this is our smtp setting so we'll go back to the code this is our code here i have to remove uh i have to just go to this place you go to dot emb file inside the dot emb file we have these items here that is our mail setting so i'll 
right click and paste what we have copied so you can see we have mailer that is this particular one we have mail host this is it here we have mail for this is it here we have mail user then we have mail password so we'll just remove all this all right so we will now close this gap all right so now we have set our email all right so next thing to do is we are now going to test out and see how our email verification will go all right so let's test it out and see so let's go back to the this is it our forget password we have to refresh it all right so our user is user at example.com so click on send reset link all right so it is loading we just have to give it a little period of time so make sure you have internet connection while you are trying to do this all right so it is downloading so i'm going back to the mail trap you can see we are able to see the forget password uh notification in our email so just click on this then it to open you can see reset your password all right so on click on reset password this is going to take us to a reset password page all right so now what we have to check here is that let assume we put an email that is different from this particular email maybe sss at example.com on click or reset you can see it load and it finish loading but the thing is that we were not able to see anything even when we go here we cannot be able, we are not able to see any email all right because we use wrong email so now we are going to add a notification component to be showing us error if there's any error all right all right so to do that the easiest way here is that we use the same thing in our login all right so I'll click on login this same error we can just copy everything from here we'll now go to this place under the CRI CSRF token we'll now add it up there so just paste it all right so this time around we are only dealing with email input so we have to just remove the password we don't have anything to do with the password so on doing this here we say that if error has email or error has password so we don't need the one of the password we only need the one for the email so we just click on this then we now save so let's try it out we're supposed to see an error all right so I'll come to this place now i will refresh the page before i try it so let me use wrong email so I'll click on send reset link you can see we have an error component which said we can't find a user with that email all right so that is this so what about if we use correct email that is our correct email like this when we click on reset you can see it will load now it has sent the link it has sent the link you can see the link a few seconds ago right so we supposed to also receive notification that yes the link had been sent so for we to do that we have to add another component inside this form all right so what we have to do is we can do it below this if statement that is for our forget password so we'll start with also another if so inside this we will now specify the condition so if session have status so we we'll now put the code that's supposed to run for us all right use telling class 
Tailwind CSS class to add some little graphics, to add some little styling to it. So we use background color to be green. 100, that is a light green. Then we will now add border. Alright, so then outside who we'll specify the role of it is going to be alert. Okay, so now we have specified this. Next thing is the content of the div is just going to be we have to add this two colibris, then we'll say session. Status. Alright, so that is so. So now let's save this and check it again and see how it looks like. All right. So now let me refresh this page. So as I refresh it, I'll go and use correct email. Now I click on send reset link. You can see we have success message we said we have email your password reset link so when we check it you can see this is the password reset link all right so on click to test it out we we'll just click on reset password this is going to open this page for us all right so this is where we are going to stop in this lecture in the next lecture we are also going to customize this reset password page See you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to customize this forget reset password page. All right. So to do that, as usual, I have a file. This file, which is named reset password, is going to be added as a link to download under this lecture. All right. So before then, I'm going to open this file in BS code. Therefore, we can copy the code and replace it with the existing one. Alright, so let's find the existing code. It's here under the resources. We have views, we have auth, then we have reset password. Alright, so this is the reset password. So before we go further, let's get the code from this particular file. As usual, we are going to copy everything from here control plus c to copy it all so as we copy it we can now go to the page that is this reset password and paste it below this all right so now as we did this the next thing to do is this particular link here we have to remove it we just did that for the forget password page that is this we have to copy this bit all right you copy it then we make sure that we come to this particular place remove this and replace it with the other one all right that is this so when you are using this bit you have to make sure that you are you run this command that is all right make sure that you run npm you understand right so this is the command npm run dev all right so when you run it so you are going to get all the styles that we added inside this app.css which is inside our css folder all right you can also use the other way around that is the one that i have just removed so it's just very easy to follow so now what we have to do is we have to copy this form as usual come and replace it with this form here all right so after we do this next we have this input hidden token 
reset password token all right so we have to also copy it we'll put it immediately after the csrf token all right so that is this next is we have to also work with the email input all right so the email input we just need to take the name and the value as well all right so we'll take the name for the email when we we'll take the name come to this place and paste the name then we we'll also add the value so the value as usual we do this we say old email all right all email so not just all the email this time around we have a requested email so what we need to do is let's check it also from here you can see request email right so we have to copy this from the comma request email so we now come to this point here we add it up inside the value so that is all for this particular one so therefore we can be able to see the email the same way we are seeing this email at this place so that is the essence of what we just did then for the first word we are also going to take the first word so the type of first word we just take the name only the name is sufficient for us so come to this place where is the name we have the reset password all right so this is it here we have password then we'll add the name which is this make sure the name is password then the next part which is for the which is for the confirmation confirm password to also take the name just the name is okay because we already have the id as compound password we can also do this we we'll take the id like this let's go to the form you can see the id is confirm password so we have to change it to this confirm password the same way it is like this then we'll now go back again we'll copy the name so this is the name which is confirm password so we'll go there and copy it come back and add the name all right so we already know that this is the type of the input which is first what we have input, uh, button type submit all right so here we can see back to login so as we did earlier we just include the url so we say url like this then we now put this this is all so now um, we are done with this so next thing to do is we have to test it out and see so before we test it out let's delete this particular file here all right so to test it out what we have to do is let's refresh the page and see what it contains so we are refreshing the page all right so now we have just refreshed the page that is our reset password you can see it is not saved make sure you click on ctrl plus s to save your changes then you go ahead and refresh the page all right so now the page is refreshing trying to load off all the new look on it Alright, so sometimes when you uh, experience a situation where after refreshing the page is loading, so make sure you press Ctrl plus C to stop the NPM from running. You remember we did NPM run dev, right? This particular command. So stop, just press Ctrl plus E to stop it from running. Then you now run it again. Just Ctrl C like this, it will stop the NPM from running. So you now press npm run dev again, hit enter. So when you do this, it will start. It will start your bit again. If you are all right. So when it started, now your page is going to reload automatically. All right. So as it reload now, you are going to try it again. We we'll click on user at example, then click on set. So we'll wait for it to send the reset link again from there we can be able to see our customization all right
All right, so now we have get we have to check and see the email because it have sent us a message. So we'll go there. You can see the email is there. We we'll click on it. So we'll now go and click on reset password. So this now have load our customized form. All right, and it also load with the current email. So now what we have to do is we want a situation where, for example, when we add new password and the password did not tally or let us when we add a new password the password minimum is eight so we'll add something less than eight or we'll click on reset password it is not going to do anything there, there is an error all right so how can we see the error we can do it in same way we did for the for the login all right so we can do that we can go to the login the login we have this error so we can just copy it and use it at that same place so reset password we can add it off under this that is under the token we just add it up like this all right so after adding it off let's save it so this will show us all the errors that we can encounter so let's add something from one two three four five one two three four five that is five characters all right so when i click on reset you can see it say password field it says password field confirmation does not match because i put different things so if i add the one two three four five here also i add one two three four five when i click on reset password now you can see the password field must be at least eight the characters match but it is not up to eight so now I will change the password to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'll click on reset password. So this time around, the password has been resetted. All right. So we can log in with our new password now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll click on login now this new password is going to work all right so let me log out and go to forget password again we will now reset it back to our default password all right all right so it has sent us the link we'll go back to there we have the link here so we we'll now reset it back to our default password which is password so here also we we'll set it back to password yes so now we have successfully set the reset password page so this is where we have come to the end of this lecture in this lecture, we are going to focus on the registration page. So when we click on register, you can see this is a default breed registration page. So we have to customize this, right? So for we to do that, as usual, I have a registration template that we are going to use. I'm also going to attach it in the lecture all right so i'm going to open it by the side all right so this is often i'll just press ctrl plus s to copy everything from there so after that we'll now go to the let me do this let's close all these files so now inside the old folder we have register blade so this register blade i'm going to face everything inside all right so we have this now let's go back to the other page which is login here we have to let's check this other one all right we can use for the login sentence with it we can just copy this page we have many ways to include our tailwind css 
so when we register i'm going to replace this we can still work with this which is the online version but just let's use the offline version to save the time all right so now we have added this so next thing to do is we'll start from the top we'll take this form as usual so we'll replace it this then we'll go off again we have to work with the name input all right so name and value so we'll go back to the button here we have the id name we'll face this then the value is going to be old name all right so that is for the name now for the email we we'll also copy email like this so the name is email then value also is going to be email so we'll use old email all right so after this we we'll now check the remaining things which is password so the name is password we use it like this id the name password and after the password the next item which is confirm password so this we have to change the id so we we'll go down there we have the id which is confirm password we have to change it like this then we we'll also add the name which is password confirmation so make sure you put it exactly the way it is so that is for this now next is the link that is already have an account so login so we have to add the login page here or the login route so just put route then login or we can just use this so this is no route this should be url all right because login is our first feed so that is cool now the last item to add let's just remove this default blade code so come back to the login here we have to copy this that is if we have any error in terms of the password or email so let's just copy everything from here same things we did in the login so also do it inside the register therefore we can see error all right so now we have done everything let's save this then we'll go back to the page you can see it automatically update everything for us so let's try out i'll put something like right so email i can put anything as the email let's say sunny at gmail.com then the first word i'll put one two three four five six then this one two three four five so let's try to log in definitely we are going to see an error you can see password password field does not match so let's add the password and you can see this uh, message this information are still there because we are using value all name and value all email so here let's change the password one two three four five six one two three four five six click on register so this now you can see password field must be eight characters so let's add the password we just put password as usual we we'll write password password all right so let's click on register yes so you can see our new user is being registered successfully so this is how we can easily customize the registration page when we check our database localhost slash php my admin so we can be able to see all the records of our database all right the name of our database is loan so we click on loan 
users we suppose have three or four users now so we have three users this is this here the last one we added all right and you can see the user then the status is inactive all right so these are the ones that we these are the ones that we seeded the other time all right so this is the end of this lecture i will add the the customized page that is this page that we are going to use to customize under this lecture so see you in the next lecture do not forget to leave a review please in this lecture we are going to work with the admin section and user dashboard section in such way that we we'll separate the user dashboard from the admin dashboard let me show you what we are going to do we have to log in first I'm logging as user. All right, so now we have logged in as user. You can see what we have we are in the dashboard right likewise when i log out i now log in as admin so we log in as admin we also find ourselves in this same dashboard so i want a situation where when we have an admin login admin will have separate dashboard from the user's dashboard so to do that first of all we need to create a controller all right so we have to create two controllers so for we to create the controller this is what we'll do we'll just open the terminal let's open new terminal from the project folder so to create a new controller it is just a very soon very easy so what we have to do we just type php artisan make controller then inside we are going to create the controller inside a backend folder so we have to add backend slash the name of the first controller is admin controller all right so we just hit enter this is going to create a controller for us so we can check it out inside the project when we go to the project you can see here inside the project we have for you to access the controllers you go to half HTTP controllers you can see this command create a new folder inside the folder and we have admin controller so we we'll repeat same statement inside the command to get users controller so this is it here so instead of admin controller this time around we are going to create user controller so we we'll hit enter so now we have two controllers we have admin controller then we have user controller all right so the moment you create a controller the first thing for you to do you have to include it inside the route page that is web.php so because we are going to use it so for we to do that we just need to say use have http that is the folder then controller that's the next folder inside you can see it here we have app we have app we have http and this controller so you can see controllers we have to add as controllers and after this we are now going to open it and specify this backend folder so we just put backend 
all right so inside the back end we are now going to specify the controller that we want to import so we'll start with admin controller then you put semicolon at the end so for the user controller we just copy and paste so we'll copy that then we we'll change this to user controller all right so now this is the first thing that we have to do all right so next thing to do is we are going to create a middleware we are going to create a middleware so the middleware we are going to create is going to be in between the two routes let me explain this to you for example now here if let's say we have admin slash dashboard so we also need to have another url another route which is user something like this user dot dashboard so the class that is going to be checking who logged in between our users you know we have two different type of users we have admin we have user so the class that is going to be separating the uh, identifying the user role that is the class that we are going to create so that is the type of class that functions as a middleware class so we are going to create a middleware class so this class for we to create the middleware class it is also a simple step what we have to do we also have to go to the we have to go to the command prompt as we did for the controllers so this time around we'll put php artisan make middleware so this middleware we can give it a name of check role that is the name of the middleware so we just hit on enter so now it have created this class for us that is middleware class so for we to see this we just need to go to the product file so we have to go to app http you can see middlewares so we'll now go to middleware like this all right so inside the middlewares we can see we have check role middleware all right so the last thing that we have to do on this is we need to include this middleware inside we have to register the middleware so for which to register the middleware there is a file called kernel all right so this kernel as well we are going to register the middleware so where is the kernel located this is kernel.php so you just click on this to open it so when we open it you just scroll down you can see this is where we are going to include our middleware so we can just do something like this you copy this line paste it below so this is alias name that is aka name so we'll give it a name of role all right then the name of the class is check role that is this particular class here this particular one so you can right click copy this put it exactly the way it is come back then this place you paste it all right so doing this will now give you chance to register this middleware so after i do that you just press on ctrl plus s to save it then here also we have to include that middleware all right we have to include that middleware it's not that much necessary because we can may use it somewhere else so let's just avoid it for this all right so this is how we uh we can create controllers we also create a middleware then we also register the middleware all right so we'll progress in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to give condition to the middleware in such a way that it will detect which role is logged in and where to take the lo the login user to so let's go to the middleware we have app http middleware then we have the middleware which is check role so this is the default code 
created within the middleware. So what we need to do is here we have to add another parameter. We can call it role. So this is a string variable role. And here inside the we have to give you a condition now. So we say if now we'll now close the if statement here. So let's pass the condition. So the condition since we have a request. So we'll just go to this, copy this request from here. Alright. So if there is a request, then we say request from who that is from user and the role of the user. So now if the role is not equal to if the role is not equal to role that is the role for our middleware either user or admin so what will happen is we are going to specify what needs to be done so we will now return return redirect route so the route is going to be login route right then you put semicolon at the end so what we did here is that we will say request user that means the user that is trying to log in if that user doesn't have role so it would redirect that person to login because login is our initial page that's the first page all right otherwise if that person have you a role so it will now give that person access all right so that is it so we are now done with the check role all right so next thing is we have to check and see if that user is really logged in all right so for you to check that we have to go to controllers http controllers then we have auth inside the auth we have authenticated session so that means that means after a person have role and he successfully logged in so now we have to work on you can see handling incoming authentication requests so this is where we are going to redirect person to where he belongs to if it is admin it will direct that person to admin dashboard if it is user it will direct that person to user dashboard all right so now what we have to do first is that we need to create routes for the admin and the user as well all right so to do that we have to go to the wave.php so it's inside route the web route so we already include these two items that is admin and controller all right so next thing to do is we have to create the route all right so we are going to create two routes so let's come down here so the first route it is going to be with middleware we have to guard it so we have to specify how many middlewares you can see we have many middlewares we have odd middleware for you to confirm that when you go to panel you can see we have this odd middleware which will check whether person is authenticated or not then we have our own middleware here all right so likewise on this place here we have hot so after the auto middleware we will now give comma we will now also check that person's role so we have another middleware which is role and the parameter that that role comes with that is when we are checking the role you can see user role right so when we are checking the role the parameter it comes with so we have admin because when you check inside the database here we have two roles we have admin and user so the parameter admin so if that person is admin so now this is a group route we are creating so all the routes that the admin can be able to access they are all going to be mentioned here all right so all right so now we have this next we just put semicolon at the end so now this is going to be routes for the admin so we have other one which is we can just copy this and paste it below so this is going to be 
when the role of the log in person is user so all his routes are going to be added here all right so now we'll just deal with one route so it's going to be a route and it's going to be a get type all right we are not going to post anything we just want to build some things so now we are going to specify the the url of it so it's going to be slash admin slash dashboard all right then inside this slash admin slash dashboard next what we have to do is we have to put the class so you can see we already include the controller that is admin controller class so we just add it we have to specify that this is a class so we'll do something like this then we give comma and we're now going to create a function that is going to deal with this so this is the function which is indexed then the name of this route is going to be so we just need to give it a name the name is going to be admin dash dot dash bot so that's the name at the end we'll now put semicolon all right so this is done we are done with this part all right so next thing to do is we are now going to we can copy this exactly the way it is and paste it inside this particular one so here is going to be user dashboard all right then here is also going to be user dashboard and the controller is going to be inside user controller so this is user controller all right so this is it so all the routes that all the pages that admin need to access they are all the routes are all going to be inside this group route the users route are all going to are also going to be inside this group uh, this users group route all right so let's save this okay so now uh, we are done with kernel already so we are going to close the kernel so now we are inside this authentication session controller so this authentication session controller what we need to do is we are going to put the condition so that means after successfully you can see request session regenerated when there is successful login so what we have to do is we have to use condition that is if else so the first condition is if the request that is this particular request so if the request that user user role is equals to admin that means if the person that log in his role is admin so this is what is going to happen we will return and redirect intended this should be t all right so return redirect intended then we'll open this we will now specify our who we'll specify this route all right so we'll specify this route all right so now we'll put semicolon at the end all right so here we have the next one which is else if else if right so else if so this else if is going to be a little bit we have to do it this way also we can just copy this all right so here we can just hit enter all right so else if the user role is user that means the person that is trying to log in his role is user so what we do is we can also copy this particular place this is very easy to understand and it's going to be user dashboard that is this route that we just create user dashboard all right so we just copy this also and paste it inside this place so this is going to be users dashboard 
else if maybe it is just a new person that did not log in so it will redirect to home so this home is inside router service providers so this home that is the initial page for you to check the initial page you can go to services folders this is provider folder then we have route route service provider this is route service provider and you can see this is the home so the home we can just remove this and let it be this that means our home page which our login page is also will always going to be displaying all right so that is this then the last thing for we to do here is inside the um what we have to do next is let's just create the views all right so since we already create or uh, let's press uh, press control s to save the changes that we have just done this one also control plus s to save it okay so now what we have to do is let's create views that is the pages that are going to be displayed all right so for you to create the pages we have to create it inside resources we we'll go to view so inside the view we are going to create two folders all the admin pages are going to be inside admin folder and we'll create another folder which is user so all the users pages are going to be inside user so for the admin we'll create the first one we'll call it dashboard so new file it's a blade file we are going to create a blade file so dashboard dashboard.blade.php all right then we have inside the user we we'll also create dashboard.blade.php so dashboard dot blade.php enter all right so now we have these two files so the first file let's just use this html to just add a default information later on we'll change it so h1 we can say admin dashboard all right then for the user we we'll also do same things so this is h1 We'll call it user dashboard all right all right so now we have these two files ready we are going to make use of them very soon so now the last thing that we have to do here is that if let us we have uh we log in you can see we support you to build that we have to create a function a method inside this controller with the name of index likewise inside this user with the name of index so let's go there we we'll right click on this to copy this so we'll go to the we are done with this we are also done with this we are done with this also so let's go to the controllers the two controllers we created http controllers backend admin dashboard so here we we'll create a method so this is going to be public function we give it a name of index so it is not going to return anything we we'll just view something so we we'll say return view inside the view we are going to return admin dashboard all right make sure you put semicolon at the end so that is for this all right we'll do same for the user controller so we'll create also another function We'll say public function the name of the function according to our route is index so click on it indexed so it is also going to return view so return view which is user dashboard all right so let's save this all right so this is cool so now we can test out and see the result of what we just did now so let's go we'll come to this this is our page here let's log out from this and create a new session so we'll start with the admin 
so we'll go to admin at example.com then the password is password so we'll click on login so you can see yes the moment we log in now we are able to access the admin dashboard all right you can see admin dashboard all right so let's now uh log out from there we can go back to the initial dashboard later on we'll also remove this dashboard so we can only log out from here then we we'll also use user then the first word is password and we we'll click on login you can see we are now in user dashboard all right so this is how we can redirect the logged in users according to their role see you in the next lecture do not forget to leave a review very nice review for this course thank you in this lecture we are going to change the look of this dashboard both for the admin dashboard and the user dashboard all right so as usual to do this there is a file that we are going to use all right so let's assume i open this file to view how it looks like let's check it out and see how it looks like so this is the admin page that we are going to use all right we will add many contents at the sidebar as time goes on so let's add this off so for we to add it we'll come back to this file i'm going to add the file for you to download as usual so i'll open this inside abs code So I'll copy everything from here. So we'll go to the open file is user dashboard. This is it here. So we have to go to users dashboard. So we have to go to resources, views, user, then dashboard. So I'll paste it all inside this. All right. So let's preview it and see the changes we just made. Yes, so this is perfect. All right, so now what we have to do next is we have to segment this dashboard into pieces. Therefore, it's going to be very easy for us to utilize it. We we'll segment the heading, we we'll segment the sidebar, we we'll also segment the footer. So to do this, what we have to do is we just need to go to the file so inside this user we are going to create a folder we can call the folder sections that means sections of the files so inside the section we'll add a file we'll call it header this is a bullet file so header.bullet.php then we'll add another file which is we can call it footer footer.blade.php the advantage of this is it will help you to manage your code very well then we'll also add another one we'll call this sidebar sidebar.blade.php all right so next thing to do is from this dashboard that is this particular one you can see from off we have footer so we'll cut this footer from here We'll add it up inside this footer file all right so to add it inside the dashboard all we just need to do is we'll just say add include so we are going to include admin no user you can see the file user sections then footer all right so that is this then we'll also go off we have header so let's minimize this we'll cut the header from here so we have the header file this is it here let me paste it here so here we'll also include it so we'll say include user sections then header all right so that is this then next thing to do is we have uh, 
the sidebar sidebar start from here so let's cut the sidebar from here also so we'll come to the sidebar this is it here paste it and inside the sidebar inside the dashboard we'll now include the sidebar as well so include user sidebar all right so now we have done this so if we go to file save all when we refresh the page everything is there intact all right so that means our segmentation is okay so this is now going to contain the content of all our activities for example when i add h1 content so when we save it we'll go to the dashboard and refresh it you can see we have content here all right so that is it so we don't need this we just need to remove this all right so that is cool so now this is done successfully so we don't have any issue all we just need to do is we just say yield at yield yield the name of it we can just call it content all right so that is this so now well, let's refresh this all right so we have everything intact so we are done with this for the admin so next thing to do is we are going to do uh, we are done this for the user so in the next part we are going to also do for the admin so to do this for the admin all we just need to do is let's also go to the admin folder we'll create another folder we'll call it sections and inside the sections we'll create header dot blade dot php then we'll also create another file which is footer dot blade dot php now we'll create another file which is sidebar dot blade dot php all right so next thing is we have to change the admin content as we did earlier so now for the admin we already have the header here so this file we have to copy it again Control c copy it and we'll now go to the admin dashboard and paste it all right that's for the admin so we'll save it and we'll cut the footer from here we'll add it up inside footer here we'll save it so let's close this so in the dashboard now when we save the dashboard we need to include the footer so we can say at include so include admin sections footer all right so that is for this then also go off we have the header so we also need to cut the header from here so as we cut the header we have to paste it here also so we paste the header let's close the header so in the dashboard we we'll also include the header so we we'll say include admin header all right so that is this so we have the sidebar also we have to cut the sidebar from here so the sidebar is here let's cut it and we'll add it here also we we'll save it close it then inside the sidebar we're going to include the sidebar so admin section then sidebar all right so we are done with this so next we will be working with the content all right so that is all about the admin all right so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to deal with changing this name that is the default name to the login user's name or login admin's name. 
then here is now going to show us the role of that login user and after that we are also going to add the logout functionality all right so before we do that when we hover the mouse on top of this name we can see that we cannot be able to it is it's supposed to show a pointer a cursor pointer for example something like this but it is not showing this so we use tailwind css to add that it's just very easy let's see how it looks like so we'll go to the header this is the header here so inside the header we we'll start with the image so the image will locate the class this is the class of the image round full so what we we'll do is we we'll just put cursor then pointer so that is all we can do on this so we can copy this cursor pointer add it up inside the h2 that is this h2 that displays the name so we can add it here we can also add it inside the role as well so we press ctrl plus s to save it so let's go back and see how it looks like you can see yes now we have this the moment you click we are able to see my profile setting and logout so the next thing to do is we are now going to do the logout so the logout we just need to go to heading all right so inside the heading here we have this that is href all right so now inside the href what we need to do is let assume we have the l1 here li here then we have the closing of the li so next is here we are going to add a form that's a html form so the action of this form is going to be we are going to use route then we will now use login like this so that is no not login we are going to use logout because we are trying to log out all right so that is for the logout then we also need to specify the method of the form which is going to be a post method all right so that is for this then after that we have to click here to expand the form expand it again so inside we are going to call csrf token that's our csrf token and after this we are now going to cut this anchor tag here we paste it inside this all right so this anchor tag you can see we can break it down also something like this all right so what we need to do next here is that the href here we are going to put the route as well so we just put this route logout right then after that we are going to add some javascript code so on click what you to do event dot prevent prevent default all right so event dot prevent default then we give space and we say this dot closest then we'll do this and we'll put what form all right so after we do this the next thing to do is after the form we say dot submit now we'll open and bracket close that's a submit function and we'll now do this all right so with this we are able to add the logout functionality all right this is a very easy things to do in laravel all right so let's check this out and see how it looks like so let me refresh so come to this place you can see i'll click on logout yes we are able to log out if we try to go back to user dashboard you can see we cannot be able to go back so let's log in user example at gmail.com then password user example.com 
then password now we're logging again all right so this time around we are going to display the registered user here we are also going name we are also going to display the role of the registered user so to do that what we need to do is just very easy we can come back to this place that is the heading so on the heading you can see welcome so we have to remove this admin we need to get the name from our database that is this particular name here we need to get it so no matter who is the user we will get this name either a regular user or admin user all right so let's do this so here we'll add something like this all right so after adding this next thing to do is we'll call out user then the user we are going to take the user name all right so user name that is what we need all right so that's cool so next let's just save this we'll go back to this place we'll refresh the feed you can see this is a regular user then the next is we need to display the role of that user so to display the role we have to also do same things on this so let's just copy this so here we can just paste it and instead here we are going to say we need the role of that user all right so let's save this yes you can see this is a user so that is all we need to do here so we will repeat the same things on the admin dashboard so let's log out and log in as admin so the admin we use admin at example.com then we have password and we'll click on login to log in so this also need to be changed so all we just need to do is go to resources views admin section header so inside the header who we'll can repeat this same i'll just paste it i already copied it and this is going to be username and this is going to be user role all right so let's save it and refresh this page to see what we have yes you can see admin user as the username user name here then the role is admin so you can see admin all right next we are going to add the logout so to make it very easier for us we can just copy the logout from the one that we just did that is the header here so what we do we just copy this form completely so come back to this place the last item hit enter here and here also hit enter so inside this we now face this so now we have everything that we need so let's arrange this a little bit therefore it will look fine all right so let's press ctrl plus s to save it i'll go and refresh the page so click here you can see also need to add cursor pointer so what we do is we'll come to the name that is this place give you a space then we'll say cursor pointer all right now copy this cursor pointer from here here also is going to be the cursor pointer the picture also we we'll have to go to the class of the picture and also add it after the rounded full all right so I, that is all so let's press now refresh the page and see what we have as the output you can see this is perfect when we click on this we click on log out we are able to log out if you try to access admin dashboard we cannot be able to access it all right so see you in the next lecture do not forget to leave a review for this course very nice review